do, as well, you've seen my program with the planning that goes into it, but we also have this other document called a What Will It Take to Win Plan? We are all about trying to go to the Olympics and win gold medals. And I've never been one to be shy about saying that. I want to be an Olympic champion. And so in order to become an Olympic champion, you just don't turn up on the day and just, you know, cross your fingers and hope that you're going to get across the line at the end of the day. There's a lot more that goes into it. And in this section, I'm going to share a little bit about that. We talk a lot about the one percenters. So I'm very good at completing all my physical work. But there is, there is so much more uh, than the physical work that goes into being an, an elite athlete. Each week, I'm having two massages. I see my nutritionist weekly. I have to log my nutrition data every day. I see my sports psychologist either fortnightly, sometimes weekly if we're coming into a race. Our doctor is available twice a week if we need to see them. Physiotherapy for me now that I'm getting a little bit older, unfortunately, is a little bit more regularly than I would like. Recovery, so I'm talking things of like sleep, what am I doing outside of my life to ensure that my mind is fresh and ready to go. Sleep, as I mentioned before, is basically the foundation of recovery. There's a starter and water, which I'll get into a little bit in a second. Then there's the actual meetings. We're in these meetings probably fortnightly, sometimes weekly, depending on um, what sort of a planning phase that we're in. And then there's our athlete monitoring system. So every morning I'm expected to wake up and tell the coaches how many hours I slept, what was my body weight, in the morning when I wake up, what's my heart rate? How do I feel? Am I sore? Am I injured? All of those kinds of things. This picture here on the left is actually something to do with my sports psychology, which I'll get into now. Now with sports psychology, we I think it's one of the most underestimated areas of elite sport and something that I hope in the future will become a more important part of elite sport because if you can understand how you work yourself, then you can get the best out of yourself. And that's not just in sport, that's in anything. So uh, we work on this performance mindset and there's three key, key areas of that. There's self-awareness, self-regulation, and then there's peak performance, which is the ultimate realisation of the first two. So with self-awareness, self you're trying to understand your psychological state. So what am I thinking, feeling, doing? So, for example, I used to get quite anxious and nervous before races, but I, I, I knew or had an awareness that I was anxious or nervous, but I didn't really understand um, what it meant. So that's the second state. Uh, second stage take control of your psychological state so what I ne needed to do was figure out well what can I do to help manage those that anxiety and nerves because it never goes away I'm as nervous as what I would be lining up for an Olympic final as what I am lining up for a state championship so I learned that I needed to um, implement some destruction techniques um, to focus on my breathing to be aware of when the thoughts are creeping in and generally the an anxious thoughts are uh, what about this person? And uh, what if I can't do that time? Or you know, I want to, I want to win. I really want to win. I really want to win. Well, I can't really control those things. The things that I can control is what am I focusing on right now? Do I need to be thinking about this right now? Can I be thinking about something else? And then all of those things, if you're successful at being able to be self-aware and self-regulate often re result in an optimal performance. And we talk about this automatic performance. So I know how to ride a bike. I do it every day. But sometimes in racing, it can be a lot harder. So because of the, these first two things, if I'm not self-aware and if I don't self-regulate. And this, as I said before, relates to everything in life. If I've got to do a talk in front of a lot of people, I use this same technique. If I have to do an exam for uni, I use this same technique. So the things that I've learned with sports psychology are going to help me through the rest of my life. Then there's our uh, whereabouts, our drug testing. Every day I have to provide to ASADA, which is the Australian Sports Anti-Doping Authority, an hour where I'm going to be. I also have to provide my overnight accommodation. So it's more than just doing the, the, the drug sample or the drug test. I also need to provide... Um, the World Anti-Doping Authority with evidence of where I'm going to be so that they can test me at any time. I think that this is a really good system that we've just, well, has been around for a long time. It can be a little bit tedious. It's often the last thing that I think about before I go to bed and the first thing when I wake up. 
but I think it's a really important part of sport and something that is um, often underestimated and unknown to the public. With everything that's going on, I found that it is so important to try and have balance in your life. And so for me, what I've realised over time, it's not something that you find. You can't go out and find balance. You actually have to create it for yourself. I'm so busy, you can see that I have one day a week off generally, that I needed to I needed to actually create time in my schedule to go and do the things that feed my soul. Uh, I'm involved with a charity that I feel really passionate about, the Below the Belt Pedal Thorn. I still study at university and I'm four subjects away from completing that. That gives me a lot of, um, I guess, peace, knowing that when I do decide to retire that I have something else to fall back onto. I have a great support around me with my family and my friends and I actually go and make sure that I see them regular, on a regular basis. And I think for you know students that are studying for exams or HSC or you know, you're about to embark in a new part of your life, it's important that you remember to do the things that feed your soul.